So far in this training, you have used the HTTP service component to communicate with a server to retrieve both static and dynamic XML data. In this video, you will learn how to use the Flex Framework's web service component to invoke web service methods. You will also learn that handling result and fault events for web service objects is similar to handling them for HTTP service objects. Lastly, you will learn how to call multiple methods from the same web service object. Flex applications can interact with SOAP-based web services. SOAP, or the Simple Object Access Protocol, is an industry standard specification for web services. The SOAP interface is defined in an XML-based web service description language, or WSDL, document. The WSDL must be accessible at runtime using a URL accessible over HTTP. In Flex, you use the web service component to access this SOAP-based service. The component does runtime introspection of a WSDL to determine how to make and receive the messages from the server. To connect to a web service, you first declare the web service MXML component in a declarations tag block. Remember that the declarations block is where you instantiate non-visual MXML components in your MXML application code. You should define an ID property for the web service object to uniquely identify the component instance and to make it accessible to your ActionScript code. Next, you must define the WSDL property, which is a relative or absolute address to the web service. The address can refer to static or dynamically generated WSDL documents. In either case, the document will be loaded automatically when the web service object is created. In the code I will create for this video, you will see that I access a WSDL document that is dynamically generated by a remote ColdFusion server. Remember that this training series uses ColdFusion to generate all the example data, but you can use PHP, Java, .NET, or any server technology that can generate web services. Note that, unlike the HTTP service object definition, which directly accessed the data, this web service instance only accesses the WSDL document, not the methods on the servers that directly provide the data. For a web service object, you must invoke the web service method, also called an operation, in a separate statement. You call the operation as a method of the web service object using dot notation. You reference the service object's ID property, the dot, and then the method name. Obviously, you will need to know the server side method names, which you can find in the WSDL. You can invoke these operations on Flex Framework system and user events. For example, this code calls the get employee record operation of the employee service object on the web service component's load event. This event is triggered when the WSDL document has loaded successfully. This example invokes the operation on the creation complete event of the application container. Note that if the web service object has not loaded the WSDL document by the time the creation complete event is dispatched, then the call will be queued and executed when the WSDL has loaded. This last example demonstrates the service method being called on the click event of a button. Here is the employee portal vehicle request form that you created in day one and modified in earlier exercises on this day of training. Note that the drop-down list control does not contain any data because I've removed the HTTP service object from the declarations block. I will replace it with a web service object in a moment, but let's first review the rest of the code. You can see the UI components to create the form at the bottom of the file in the UI components section. You can also see the functions that add the date chooser event listeners and handle the validation on those controls. At the top of the script block, you can see the employees class variable that is an instance of the array collection class that is bound to the data provider of the drop down list control. Remember that it is this employees property that I need to populate with the return data from the web service method call. This is the WSDL document that I will load into the application. I am scrolling down the XML file to find the get employees operation. This is the method I will invoke to grab all of the employee data from the server. Between the declarations tags, I am pressing control space twice so that the content assist tool shows the available code templates. 
and typing WE and selecting the web service code template. Now I'm removing the closing web service tag and modifying the opening tag so that it uses single tag syntax instead of tag block syntax. I am changing the code template so that the web service object's ID property is set to employee service and I am pasting the URL for the WSDL document into the WSDL property. We will use the result and fault events later in this video, but for now remove all the properties in the web service object that we have not modified. Remember that this code simply loads the WSDL document. It does not retrieve any data. I want to request the data when the application loads, so I'm locating the opening application container tag. You can see that the creation complete event of the instance calls the init app method, which adds the event listeners for the date chooser component instances. Below the event listeners, I am typing employee service dot get employees to invoke the web service operation. I am saving the file and then selecting the network monitor view and enabling the tool. I'm running the application and then switching back to Flash Builder to look at the network monitor traffic. Note that there are two requests that have been logged. The first one is an HTTP service call to load the WSDL document. The second one is the web service request for the get employees method. I'm clicking on the response tab to the right. When I expand the response body tree, you can see all the employee data in the XML format. Like the HTTP service object, if the data is returned as an array of objects, then Flex will convert it to an instance of the array collection class. Also like the HTTP service object, you can directly access the data through the last result property. The syntax for web services, however, uses dot syntax starting with the service object's ID property. Then you reference the remote method name, then the last result property itself. Here's an example of this code if the service call returned a simple string. If the service operation is named employee service dot get employee record, then the string is accessed by typing employee service dot get employee record without the parentheses dot last result. As with HTTP service, you can exert more control over the return data if you handle it in a result event rather than simply binding to the last result property. You handle the result event like you would any other event on a component in the Flex framework. Here, the result event is placed on the component with a defined event handler, which passes the event object as the one argument. The event object is typed to the mx.rpc.events.result event class, which you must import. The result event class data types its result property as an object. If you try to assign the result data to an array collection variable, you will get an implicit coercion error. Therefore, you must use the as operator to cast the result property as an instance of the array collection class. In my code, I am adding a result event on the web service object and then using the Flash Builder Code Assist tool to generate the result event handler. I am control clicking on the handler name to locate it in the script block to see that the event object is data typed to the result event class. If I scroll up a bit, you can see that Flash Builder automatically imported the class for me. Remember that the employees property is the array collection object that I want to place all of the server data into. Inside the result event handler, I am typing employees and then setting the property equal to event.result. When I save the file, you can see that the compiler throws a coercion error stating that the result property of the event object is an object and cannot be associated with the employees property, which is an array collection instance. I am using the as operator to cast the event.result property as an array collection instance. 
When I save the file, the compiler is now happy. Scrolling down to the UI components section of my code, I can see that the drop down list control is bound to the employees property and the last name field is registered as the data field to display in the control. When I run the application, unfortunately the data shows object object. This is happening because the drop down list control cannot locate the last name property of the return data. To debug this problem, I am placing a breakpoint on the closing curly brace of the result handler and then debugging the application. When prompted, I am switching to the debug perspective and then maximizing the variables tab to drill down into the event object. You can see that property names are all spelled in uppercase. This is because cold fusion is not case sensitive and so converts all variables to uppercase letters. ActionScript, however, is case sensitive. So back in my code, after I stop the debugging session and return to the flash perspective, I am updating the label field to use the last name property spelled in all uppercase. I'm doing the same for the phone property in the text input control for the office phone field. When I save the file and run the application, you can see the data now populates the drop down list control and the phone number also reflects the correct number. Handling faults for the web service component is very similar to handling results. A fault event will dispatch when there are problems retrieving data from a service. A fault event will also dispatch when the request timeout property is exceeded. The fault event also dispatches an event object, so you will have access to properties like target, type, fault, and others. As when handling a result event, you will define an event listener function and pass the event object to it. The fault event class contains four string properties. The fault detail property contains extra details about the fault. The fault code property is a simple code for describing the fault. The fault string property is a text description of the fault. The message property is a concatenation of the other three properties. I am modifying the WSDL property of the web service object to reference a URL that doesn't exist. When I save the file and run the application, you can see that the application displays a runtime error. I am returning to the main application code to register a fault event on the web service object. I am using Flash Builder to generate the event handler code, which you can see is generated in the script block. When I save the file and run the application again, you can see that the application doesn't display the data, but it doesn't display the runtime error either. You don't actually need to have anything in the fault handler. Simply having one will prevent errors from being displayed. I am adding a breakpoint to the closing brace of the fault handler and then debugging the application. In the variables view, you can see that the event object has a fault object with all the fault properties, including this fault string. I am terminating the debugging session and then returning to the flash perspective. In the fault handler, I'm calling the alert dot show method and passing the event dot fault dot fault string property for the value that will be displayed in the alert dialog body text. I am also passing the words fault information for the dialog title bar. I also need to make sure that Flash Builder did import the alert class for me, which it did. When I save the file and run the application, you can see that the alert dialog box appears. You call multiple methods from the same web service object by invoking them on the same or different events. 
As I discussed earlier, when you use the return data, you must reference the service operation name in the reference using dot notation. The problem of invoking multiple methods on the same service arises when you want to specify different result or fault handlers for each method. When the result and fault events are associated with the web service tag rather than individual operations, all operations use the same event handler. You use the operation tag to define multiple operations for your web service. The operation tag is a compiler tag which does not directly correspond to ActionScript objects or properties. Other examples of compiler tags include style and declarations. The operation tag must be nested inside of a web service tag block. It requires a unique name property which corresponds to the method being invoked on the server. You can define different result and fault handlers on each operation tag, but usually the result handlers will be different and the fault handler will use the parent definition. For your next step, work through the web service exercise titled Populating an Application with Data and Handling Faults.